There's a big one coming from the left. You see him? That's the kind we want right there. Oh yeah, he's flying, dude. Watch this. <laughs> Look at this thing, dude. Okay, okay. We're back. I can see him. It is a big crappie. guys welcome back to another video where are we what are we doing today well just came back from a trip to a walleye destination I generally do pretty well at and we completely got our teeth kicked in I could tell you guys oh it was kind of slow no we did terrible we did really bad so uh, Mitch came with me on that lost a couple days to doing that slept on the ice last night but it's kind of been a little bit chillier the past couple days, so I might actually have some ice in my home range to get out and possibly chase some crappies on some smaller bodies of water. And uh, so that's what we're doing. We're headed to a lake, we gotta check ice. Smaller body water, low number of crappies, potential to get a pretty good one, um, like one of those real studs, so that's kind of the goal. We're kind of sacrificing a numbers crappie bite to try to catch a couple of real big ones. We'll see unknown a lot of ice checking to do this bite is very going to be windowy or it has been in the past very much like a last light type crappie bite um so we'll kind of go into that but that's kind of where we're at right now early december warm spell not a lot of ice gotta find fish gotta get a video so we're gonna hunt them down Holy cow, it's probably five inches, for sure four inches of hard black ice. That is plenty for me. All right, first thing to do, a lot of times I don't catch a ton of big crappies in like a lot of basin areas. A lot of times I feel like a lot of my bigger crappies I catch are in lakes that have low densities of crappies, maybe a very deep clear body of water where you have some weeds in an area where the few crappies that are there will, will kind of fizzle into it. And we're kind of in one of those locations right now. And the best thing I can use is pretty much my forward facing sonar to find these weeds. And this kind of spot's just a lot of sand and silt. And then all of a sudden you'll run into some weed pockets and those weed pockets are where those fish will really concentrate. So um, basically if you kind of turn around here, you can see no weeds, no weeds, no weeds. And what we want to see is, that, okay, so this is kind of starting to what we want to see. You can see right there about 70 or 40 to 80 feet out, that weed right there, cabbage, coontail, milfoil, whatever it is, that's what we're looking for. And you can see as I kind of pan farther this way here, no weeds again, right? Maybe a few weeds way out that way, about 60, 70, 80 feet. So anywhere from kind of that way, 60, 70 right there to in here looks like the best stuff. So if I just go this way another 40 to kind of 80 feet, I'll be right in that big thicket of weeds, which is where I want to be and where I'm likely gonna see those crappies pulling here when they finally do. So the forward phasing sonar, the Mega Live, isn't just great for finding fish and things like that. It's great for finding structure. Arguably, I use it almost more for that on the ice than I do finding fish a lot of times, but we just gotta pull everything over there, get all set up over there and start punching a whole bunch of holes for kind of hopping through. One question we always get, as long as I got it in my hand, what is this live pull? It packs down so nice and short. This is the TKI Inc. Same company I use, open water. This is their ice fishing one. Why do I like this one so much? Foldable handle, collapsible arms, folds down to really small so I can strap it on my snowmobile or it takes up no room in the sled, but we got to head that direction. Rods, we need rods. Baits, we need baits. Got a couple panfish rods in here. I did bring one dead stick rod in case we want to like run a dead stick like a minnow or something. Just put it in a rod holder and you know, hopefully that it increases our chances of catching another fish. I'm always about fishing a bunch of lines. And bait wise, a lot of you guys 
We had a ton of response from this. This is the Fish USA box, the early ice fishing package that you need for basically a ton of baits. We kind of did an unboxing of this a few weeks ago on the YouTube channel, but it's time to actually fish with some of these baits in here. Now, I'll go ahead and link this down below. In short, the whole premise of this box, partnered with Fish USA, wanted to put all my favorite baits in a single ice box and then give you guys a really good deal on it. So essentially, there's 140 some dollars of baits and tackle in this box, including a full on flambo box to put your baits in, right? So we got a ton of stuff in here. Obviously, a lot of my favorite different baits are in this box right now. But one of the ones in which I have been really excited to fish was that it right there? Oh yeah, the small hyper rattle, the one inch hyper rattle. That was one in which I'm very excited to fish. Um, it's kind of that perfect kind of crappie size. It's very small and compact. If you guys fish a lot of the open water walleye hyper rattles, this one's one inch long. So it's gonna be kind of perfect for fishing without bait. The other crappie one, which I've been very excited for is the one inch, or sorry, not the one inch, the hyper T. This is kind of a cool tungsten jig right here. And this is probably the one which I'm really gonna be grinding with. This is a tungsten jig with foldable soft wings. And I got to play around with this a little bit so far this season, and it really has a lot of like that sideways gliding action. So instead of your tungsten just going up and down, and I'll separately link both these baits down below in case you just want these instead of the whole Fish USA box. But like I said, in the box, you just get a ton of product at a great value. So I'll link that whole thing down below as I know they still have some left, but we're gonna get this hyper T tied on a rod. So like I said, kind of instead of that tungsten just going up and down the whole time, essentially what you have happening is it, it dances out to the side, kind of like your favorite shiver minnow, jigging wrap, hyper rattle, all those kind of baits, but in a very small, compact tungsten tie. And I'm all about fishing baits where I don't need to fish live bait on, which a lot of times are more triggery style of baits, whether it's this kind of glidey tungsten jig in which I can just kind of put a finesse plastic on, or whether it's that one inch hyper rattle which I can just kind of dance around up above those fish. So there we go. That's all we're doing. Short plastic, hyper T on one rod. I think the other rod, we're gonna put that small hyper rattle on and we're just gonna go to town with those baits. Oh dude. Got him, right there, number one. It's feeling right, too. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, look at this thing. Look at this thing. All right, boys, number one. There we go. Wow, did that happen quick. Did you guys kind of see him moving up to the weeds there on the live? Well, it's one big advantage you're running forward facing. Now, that's not a giant, but right away. I mean, that was the first one on the hyper T of the year. And you can actually watch this bait kind of go back and forth on the graph and like swim in a circle. So it does have a lot of that good action. I don't know how well that lighting is, but we're gonna have to roll with it. There we go. Number one, and you guys can kind of see, look at him. <laughs> it's the best part of fishing. This kind of thin sheet of ice this time of year, man. Magical watching, you know, fish kind of fight below the hole and swim back down. But you guys can kind of see what level that sun's at. And you guys could probably kind of see this jig too. Now as I kind of pop this thing, see how darty that thing is? for a crappie jig in a little tungsten. Absolute money, because I can keep that thing kind of darting around up above them, and it really pulls those fish up quick once they kind of commit. I think there's one coming through the weeds here. Oh yeah, look at them kind of start to come up here. Come on. Got him, right there, dude. On, feeling right. Feeling right. Oh yeah, nice crappie, nice crappie. Oh, oh, we got him. There we go. <laughs> Sun is starting to go down. And uh, if we could just piece a few more. We haven't got that big one yet, but I have seen a few where I was like, oh, if that's a crappie and not a largemouth, we'll be in them. It's one of the big time advantages of doing this with forward facing sonar, man. In a flasher, you're basically just looking at like a uh, a bunch of lines down by the bottom. Where with forward facing, you know, I can actually see down into these weeds 
and kind of get ready for that fish coming up where you wouldn't just you wouldn't get that kind of clarity out of obviously a, a 2d flasher Got him right there, dude. Just creeping through the weeds. Do we have a crappie on here? What do we got? Oh yeah, another crappie. Little guy, man. Little guy. But we are on him. And this is gonna. This is when it gets pretty fast paced when you're just trying to catch them all before you know it's completely dark out. Basically, <laughs> as I don't know how well they bite after dark. Number one, some lakes they obviously do. Number two, a little harder to film in the dark. There is like another one down there. He just didn't look like one of those big magnums though. Let's see if we can drop down into the weeds to him here. Yeah, here he comes, here he comes. Got him. That's feeling feeling all right that's feeling all right oh yeah he's kind of up in the deucer here come on bud oh shallow water <laughs> there he goes he's gone he's gone we're having fun though now obviously that is the only downfall of fishing with mega live is they can definitely get tangled up in that thing come on bud i thought there was another one down there maybe not though a big one coming from the left you see him that's the kind we want right there oh yeah he's flying dude watch this my jig is in that weed right below me here come on he's the kind we want he's gonna wallop it got him right there that's what we want that's what we want come on buddy oh no oh no <laughs> look at this thing dude okay okay we're back, I can see him, it is a big crappie. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go, man. That is what I'm talking about. That is what we're after. That, those ones look a little different on the live, don't they? He just absolutely came in and smoked that thing. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about, dude. Like I said, you know, it's kind of slow start. All of a sudden you start getting a few, then they start trickling in, and then you're on them like that, dude. Sundown crappies in the weeds. Too much fun, man. We gotta get back down there though, because it's a short window and it is on right now. One thing you notice, it's crazy how much faster those bigger ones move. Oh, here we go. Got him. On, dude. On. Come here, buddy. Where you at? Where you at? At least there's a good mix of size, I guess. In the past, when I've come here, it's just been all, all of those bigger ones mainly. Good to see there's actually some normal-sized ones, but it's crazy what you learn about fish by watching forward-facing. You guys can obviously tell by watching this video, those big ones kind of move around quick, and a lot of the smaller ones will just kind of like lurk down there in the weeds down below, right? Oh, come on, eat it. Got him, right there. Fish on, dude. Fish on. We got a nice crappie there. Nice crappie there. Well, when it happens at that prime time hour, she happens quick. And you gotta be <laughs> pretty much ready. All right, guys, we are back home. Quick little crappie outing at sundown. Only had probably, you know, an hour and a half to really fish, but we made it happen. Didn't get our big giant crappie, but um, did see some of those right marks and obviously caught some decent crappies as well. It was kind of borderline about making this a video and uh, I think we probably should. 
kind of shows that little sundown, shallow water weed bite pretty well. And it kind of shows the reality of not being able to get to a lot of the ice fishing spots in which we normally can. Normally, we're taking the snowmobile out to my favorite walleye fishing grounds by this time of year. However, it's raining outside this evening. It's supposed to be 44 degrees tomorrow. Kind of a grind to get on a lot of our good spots. But we got some plans. We're jumping the truck again. Me and Mitchell are taking off back to some new stuff. Hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed this video. Um, Fish USA box, link down below. Everything I use in every video is linked down below. Whether that's the TKI live pole, whether it's the rods I use. Um, the 44 noodle is what I use today from Elliot. Um, awesome little crappie rod. All the stuff I use in every single video is linked down below. But more importantly, hopefully some of you guys are getting out ice fishing. If you are, be very safe. Ice is varying a lot. Some lakes opened up, refroze, which means you gotta be just so careful. Don't take any ice just by looking at it and say, oh, it was five inches where I just was, it should be five inches of ice here. You gotta check so much on years like this when you have these warm temps, ice shifting around and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed this video. Quick little sundown, crappie beat down, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys next time.